Alright, let's go ahead and speak with Julius again to take on the next Level 82 main story quest entitled The Last Bastion. Julius knows only too well that danger lurks around every corner. From here, we'll be heading northeast, keeping to the left side of the railway. While the road itself is straightforward, getting past the hordes unseen is anything but. Keep your weapons at the ready. They would attack their own countrymen? Aye, they spare their own but slaughter the rest without hesitation. They will try to avoid detection, the chances of sneaking by completely are no stuff slim at best. I'll lead the way, but in the event you are, we are seen, you ought to fight them off. Those two will follow us, provided they can refrain from drawing their weapons. Jeez, aren't we so antsy. While I doubt they will be foolish enough to stab their guard in the back, I will not take that chance. Without said, let us proceed. Alright then. Get moving. And in the meantime, so will I. So, as far as train tracks are concerned, he wasn't kidding about those. In fact, this train went off the rails. Yeah, and so, also, yeah, they rounded the corner and they are under attack. Yeah, do you see that we are not here to beat the crap out of you, but beat the crap out of those who got brainwashed, Mr. Julius? Or, I guess, given what you're doing, do we call you Judas? Because I can seriously see that happening too. Yeah. How mad are you now? Oh, I see why your comrades chose you. Judas, our contingent has a cure for the afflicted or tempered as we call them. Your people would need to be taken into custody that we may administer the treatment, but they would eventually regain the sanity. I don't think the words taking into custody are going to really resonate with Judas. Is that so? For all I know, your treatment would simply force them to forsake one master for another. As far as I and my legion are concerned, they are no longer our people. They're beyond saving. Those who thought differently and tried to reason with them were butchered for their bleeding hearts. Come, we have to keep moving. Yeah, no love lost whatsoever. So, back along the tracks here. We will not bother with that thing that's currently chasing me, even if it does throw some AoE my way. Yeah, the, the runaway train is right. And they never bothered to put it back on the rails? Anyway, it looks like our group has gone over here, where they are attacked again. I was like, I'm in the purple circle, how am I not considered to be um, under threat? Also, my chocobo should be out, but we're gonna leave that as is, because we've already got Mr. Julius here pissed off enough as it is. Yeah, I'm sure he doesn't want more of our reinforcements. Looks like we're not being followed. We'll continue onward. Alright then, go. And continue on. Went out to the end of the train, it seems. Oh. So you can fight for yourself. I meant what I said. These people deserve only death. I stayed my hand only out of a desire to remain undiscovered. And that's still the higher priority. We should continue to avoid any unnecessary confrontations. Keep following the railway. All right. Off where we go. Any closer to an aether currents? Nope, they're all further that way. So looks like we're gonna cross underneath the pipeline now and get ourselves ever closer to the capital itself. 
And as it turns out, there's an Aetherite around here. But, as we can see, we're still getting attacked. But this time, not by Garleans. Or, okay, they are, but, jeez. Where did those hentai come from? I mean, look, they're just completing out of these guys. Sticking out like a sore thumb. I mean, how bad is it that they now look like this? Are they escaped experiments or something? Yikes. Yeah, I had to save you again. Look at what they've become. Will you still stand there and claim that they can be cured? Those exposed to a vast quantity of a primal's aether may suffer severe corruption. Even with treatment, such victims are beyond salvation. Then you admit it. Now that you've seen those monstrosities for yourself, perhaps you'll think twice before speaking of a cure. Yeah, definitely not holding him back with his choice words. And now, further north. So, it looks like we're now officially making our way into the city itself. And bearing witness to the remnants of this place. Yeah, why drag us all the way out here? We're almost there. You have to keep your saw of the agreement, so I'll keep mine. This way. Alright. Oh, here we go. Well, at least only sprites are around here in this area. Yeah, Jillis has a tunnel for us to go into. This is Tertium, one of Garlemald's largest stations. It now serves as our headquarters. I've already sent the twins ahead. I'll be with you soon, so wait for me at the bottom of the stairs. Alright. Into the tunnel we go. Hopefully they don't have any ceruleum explosives to um, use at the entrance to blow it up so that we have no means of escape. But even if that was the case, we'd still have our ability to warp out with the teleport ability. Yeah, this is what we have. Welcome to this game's interpretation of a subway station. Alpha Node, have a look. But hey, there's even an eighth right here, too. It's plain to see why they chose this as the base of operations. Yeah, hidden from view to some extent. They could have done a lot worse. Even so, I imagine it's not the easiest place to live. Indeed, and if Judas was willing to make the powerless journey to cut broken glass in search of food, their own supplies must all be exhausted. They may be shielded from the wind and snow, but it's still bitterly cold. Much like Victor's spoils, it must be a constant struggle to keep their people warm. Lower your voices. While you may be here as my guests, the others will not take kindly to your presence. My commander is in the locomotive. Over there. Yeah, that way. Yeah, alright, well, go on in. And, uh... Complete this particular quest, in so doing. So, who runs the show around here? Well, there's the commander on the right, but we need to speak with Julius. So, now time for more introductions. These are their chosen representatives. Very well. Let us hear what they have to say. Yes, sir.
I present to you our commander. And Lord his name? Quintus Van Kena, Legatus of the First Legion. Oh, you're still hanging out with Legatuses, huh? Well, I guess you have to rely on who you can trust, right? The first? I had no idea you had survived. We lost our emperor, our city, more than half our troops. For my wounds, I may never take the field again. But we survived, I. In a manner much to your liking, I dare say. <laughs> we have no intention of adding to your misfortunes, nor do we bear you any ill will. Spare me. Though you children may speak in earnest, overtures of peace ever ring hollow in my ears. So long as man stands to profit from his neighbor's suffering, war is inevitable. Yeah, it's really ingrained in you, isn't it? Driven from our ancestral homeland into this blasted waste. Yet still you yearned to rob us of our paltry scraps. Yeah. It is that ingrained. It was only with Magitech that you learned to keep your distance. Though we knew it was only a matter of time before you regrouped and returned. Conquest and Empire were our only defenses. Emperors Solus and Varys understood this, and through their campaigns saw us grow and prosper. Much blood has been spilled in Garlemald's name, aye. But if it is a choice between yours and mine, then it is hardly a choice at all. I do not deny that a great many conflicts throughout history were driven by the desire or necessity to gain by another's loss. That is not why we are here. Nor have we come to petition your aid in the war with the Telophoroi, grave though that threat may be. Our purpose is simply this. We wish to help you. Let us help you. If there is aught that can be done to ease your plight, we would be glad to do it. Perhaps you would. Gotta start somewhere, right? But regardless of the ideals you espouse, your leaders would not send an army into Garlemald if they did not stand to benefit. Is that the way you can only think of things? If we accept their aid, they will expect their efforts to be rewarded once the Telophoroi are no longer a threat. And after compensation and concessions, the great empire would be brought to heel. Her enemies rejoice at her downfall. Our third eye, a mark of shame. We won't stand idly by and let your people be humiliated. And we're not alone in that. We only want to make a difference, to make this world of ours better. Surely you can understand that. Only on their terms. What I'm trying to say is, there are so, so many people who just don't care about making you suffer. And maybe that's almost insulting after all the suffering you feel the world has subjected your people to, but... Believe it or not, that's the truth. And now we're here, and all we're asking is for you to tell us what you want, what you hope for. They want us to get lost. So much blood has been shed, so much lost, all because of this endless war. Who wouldn't want to end it? Can we not work together to face our problems as one? You're trying to talk down an old man and a commander of the Flegate of a Legion, no less. Answer me this, young peacemakers. If a world without conflict is your desire, why reject the unity and prosperity of Garlemald? There it is. Um, because there, the unity and prosperity that your emperors sought was basically 
along the lines of Avengers Infinity War. Is it because we do not share your faith? Or in this case, your lack thereof? Yeah, Nihilus says you are. That we do not share your heritage? That our ideals and virtues differ? That we cherish and hold in the highest that which you do not? Disparity is the root of discord, and peace built on compromise is flawed and fleeting. Happiness for one and all is a dream, and the reality is that to the victor go the spoils. That is why we Galians will never submit nor surrender. For freedom and for pride, we will remain true to ourselves until the bitter end. That is my hope. And I wouldn't expect it to be any other way. It seems there is nothing more to say on the matter. Yeah. You kids got talked down by a grown man. Yeah. Get out. Or die. You will remain here while I decide what is to be done with you. Do not be alarmed. No harm will come to you if you cooperate. This is really how it's going down. We will not resist. However, as your guests, I ask that we be allowed to speak with the other members of your group. As you wish. I had no intention of locking you up. As by dawn, you would be frozen stiff and you're no good to me dead. You are free to move about the encampment. But there is one condition. And what's that? Collar them. Really? Restraining collars? Do I get stuck with one too? What are these? Restraining collars. Incentive. You'll be watched at all times. Stray too far or act suspiciously, and we will administer a rather painful shock. Or you can go for running man and blow the thing up and decapitate them that way. Stop. Keep away from that one. Why is that? Yeah, why? The champion of Eorzea is not so easily cowed. Ah, word is spread. Yeah, I can take all of you in one round. And because I'm a dragoon, I can use my dragonfire to dive to lay waste to all of you. Even if she allowed herself to be collared, the shock would be no more than an itch. No. If she refuses to obey, we will activate the twins' restraints instead. You cruel little... Yeah. You needn't worry about us. We'll forget we're even wearing them soon enough. <laughs> even now, you still... Why go to such lengths? What is it all for? Because even the most bitter adversary may one day see reason, or in the coldest, blackest of nights, meager though it may be, we must share the warmth of our fire. Yeah. I'll go with that one. Yeah. Horshafon told me that. Or at least he told it to Edie. And simply passed it on to Rika. You are a curious one. A far cry from the merciless barbarian others paint you to be. Yeah, rumors aren't always true. You will be their warden. Take them away. That's an order. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
Let's get on out of here. Yeah, we still have a lot of work ahead of ourselves if we're to finally break through and gain their trust. So we'll take our 462,000 experience points and 1,071 gil. And so, now that we're outside, we should at the very least attune to the Aetherite, if I haven't already done so. Oh, the Aetherite is not responding. Oh, that sucks. But I can go over here and get another lookout. There we go. Alright, so now that Alice and Alphanode have been collared... Julius will give us the next main story quest, but we are going to save that for next time because there are side quests that are currently available back at Broken Glass, and I would like to take those on next. So once I get all those taken care of, then we will just fly back over here to Tertium and try and give the twins a hand and see what else these Garleans, who obviously still hate us as much as they do, want in order to try and make some sort of headway. So I will be back with you guys in about a couple of hours time and we will pick things up here in Tertium in Guardian territory and we will see what we can do to make any sort of progress. So with that I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV and Walker live here on Twitch and I'll see you guys back here this afternoon as we see just what we can do to possibly make a breakthrough. So, thank you very much everyone for watching, and until next time everyone, may you ever walk in the light of the crystal.